last vodcast about work powering simple machines, we are going to be focusing on using machines, okay? things like efficiency and compound machines. Okay? So let's move on. Uh, using machines, efficiency. What is efficiency? You're going to hear about efficiency in uh, when you talk about cars, the fuel efficiency, how many miles per gallon they get. And that is, in a true sense, efficiency. Uh, so what is it? It's how much of the work that you actually put in, or you could also say work or energy, okay, remember work is a form of energy, how much work or energy you put in that actually comes out as useful work or energy. Okay? That's the point of efficiency. Okay? For example, like if I put 20 joules of work into a machine, okay, let's say into a lever, okay, but if that lever is rusty, okay, um, and there's a lot of friction in it and it doesn't move very easily, I'm not going to get the ideal 20 joules out. What's actually going to happen is I'll get maybe 18 joules out of it, okay? So I'm going to be doing a little more work than what I get out, and that's because some gets lost to friction, okay? Now, remember, you can never get a bigger number okay than what you put out or sorry than what you put in you can't create energy work is a form of energy so if i put in 20 the max i can get out is 20 but i usually get less in the real world we're going to get a little more real with you today because we do have things like friction and air resistance right. another way to put this is that efficiency is the percentage of work that is not lost to friction now in this case we lost 2 joules so that's about 10%. That means that this machine's efficiency, we'll abbreviate as EFF, is 90%. It's 90% efficient. The energy you put in, 90% of it actually comes out as true work. Uh, last way, a little more mathematically, is that it's the ratio of work out to work in. And to put that in a visual form, you have EFF for efficiency equals the work that you get out divided by the work that you put in. Now, to make that a percentage, though, we do have to do one little thing here, and that is that we have to put a little parenthesis around this. Actually, we don't have to, but we should. Uh, and multiply it by 100, okay? That will get you the percent efficiency it is. Because if we did it for that one up there, we would have gotten something like, let's see, work out. We got 18 joules output and we put in 20 joules, okay? The joules cancel out and we get 0.9, okay? Just like what you do on tests, if you get an 18 out of 20, you have to multiply it by 100 and that will get you your 90%, okay? So that's what efficiency really is, all right? All right. Now, are machines usually 100% efficient? That is a big N-O. No, 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 no. No machine is ideal. We can't make one that is 100% perfectly ideal. Okay? There is always going to be friction. And what, what that does is it takes the energy that you put in and it turns it into heat. Okay? I mean, when you rub your hands together, you're putting energy in and it's turning into friction, or sorry, friction is turning it into heat. That's why you feel your hands heat up. Okay? That's what friction does. That's why when you... Uh, use an electric uh, screwdriver and you screw something in and you screw it out, it has friction and it heats up and you, when you pull it out it's hot. Also, you usually lose some to air resistance or, or other things, I mean, but those are the big ones. Mostly friction, a little bit of air resistance. Okay? Let me give you an example also of things that would, um, like transfers of energy that are not efficient. Okay, so. If you take fuel, okay, in a car, all right, the fuel, the gasoline that you put in, let's say you put in 100 units, okay, or let's say 100 joules of fuel in, okay, what's going to happen to that fuel? Well, you're going to compress the fuel in the engine and it's going to explode. A spark is in the spark plug is going to go, it's going to explode, it's going to push that piston down, which is going to drive uh, the um, what's it called? The, not the camshaft, 
Uh, but anyway, it's going to drive the thing and it's going to move and it's going to pump stuff and it, you get mechanical energy. Okay? I know that didn't sound that intelligent, but it's true. All right, so um, as far as that goes, what's going to happen is when the piston drives down and it moves all the mechanical parts in there, what's going to happen is you're going to get some mechanical output. And typically in a car, you'll get about 30 joules of mechanical output. The fuel might have 100 joules of energy that can be released when it's burned, but only about 30 of them actually come out as mechanical output. Okay? The rest of it usually turns into heat. About 35, about a third of it, is just heat. I mean, it's an explosion. It's gas blowing up. So you're going to get heat, and that gets absorbed in the engine. And then the engine kind of transfers it to the radiator. So a fan can kind of put cool air on the radiator and move some of the heat away. Not to mention the gas itself is hot. And that's about another 35 joules. Uh, the gas is just hot. So in this case, it wasn't necessarily friction that took it out. Although, actually, if you think about it, I bet you throughout, go going from the engine to the tires, okay, or the wheels, you probably lose about another five joules of energy because there's friction in the engine, even though they're well oiled, there's still friction there. There's friction uh, in all the parts, and um, yeah, there's wind resistance as well. In fact, that's another big thing about cars is that you put in gasoline and you move but still the wind slows you down so you become less efficient. That's why they make cars aerodynamic. That's why a Prius looks the way it does. And especially those solar cars, I don't know if you've seen those little flat, uh, they sort of look like an almond that's got wheels. Um, they're very flat so that they can minimize the air resistance. Okay. They're, I don't think they're street legal, but they do exist. People have been testing them. Okay. Um, but that's the basic idea behind efficiency. Now, how can we increase the efficiency of a machine? It's actually not that bad. What you want to do is reduce the friction. That's the number one thing. And that's why Julius Sumner Miller said that we use vast sums of money to reduce friction. Okay? We do. What you can do is you can sand things to be smooth. You can use a lot of oil, some lubricants. That's what you want to do, use to make um, it more efficient. Or and here's where a hybrid comes in, is why don't you harness that wasted energy? Why not use the energy that you're going to turn into heat and turn it into useful energy? That is how a Prius or any hybrid works, okay? So what happens? Okay, so you get the car moving, okay? So let's see, I'm going to do a terrible, terrible drawing of a car, okay? Let's see. Well, let's see, maybe I can do a decent Prius. Oh, that's not bad. We'll put the wheels there. Okay, so the car is at rest, and then you start to get it moving. Okay, you use energy to get it moving. Okay, so let's say you use uh, about 300 joules of gasoline. Okay, I'm just making numbers up just to demonstrate. And then once you have it moving, the car will have 100 joules, let's say, of what we call kinetic energy. 100 joules of energy in motion. All right, so it has 100 joules, and the thing is, is that when most cars stop, okay, when most cars stop and slow down, okay, what happens is all the energy, this 100 joules, goes into the brakes, okay? So when the car stops, oh wow, that's, oh, that's terrible, okay. Uh, when the car stops and has a velocity of zero, it has to go from having this much energy to zero. All that energy goes into the brakes, okay? The brakes clamp the wheel and it turns into heat, okay? So really what's going on is the brakes inside are heating up. So all of this energy that you had in motion goes into the brakes. However, what a Prius does and what hybrids do is they have what's called regenerative braking. Regenerative, that's horrible handwriting, uh, braking. Okay, where what happens is instead of this, okay, so we can kind of cross that out, uh, instead of the brakes clamping down, they do have that for safety as well, but 
what happens is they actually have uh, a motor basically in the wheels. Uh, that's kind of an over oversimplification. But you have electricity magnet and electromagnet in there that takes the spinning motion of the wheel and turns that energy into electrical energy, which is then stored in the battery, okay? Which then, when you get going again, this 300 joules doesn't just come from gas anymore. Now, it's a combination of electricity and gas, okay? So, you're taking the motion that you had, this energy, you're storing Mark it. Mark Rogers, please stop at the office. Mark Rogers, please stop at the office. You're storing it in the battery, which then you use to get yourself going again. And that's one way to increase the efficiency, is find a way to use the energy that would normally just be wasted as heat. Okay? There's more about that online. I'm sure you can find a pretty good website about uh, how a, a Prius works more in depth, but that's the idea. So let's talk about compound machines. What is a compound machine? Well, if you're talking about a compound machine, you're talking about a machine that is made up of more than one simple machine, and I'll give you an example. Uh, one of them is a bike. I mean, you've got gears, you've got wheels and axles, you've got levers, you tons of stuff. A car, a fishing rod. A fishing rod has a rod as a wheel and axle. It works as a lever because you're Moving it around, you've got a fulcrum, uh, and then you're exerting forces, and you're pulling up a load with the fish. You've got humans. I mean, we are amazing machines. Like I said before, the bicep holds onto a tendon. The fulcrum, this is a lever now, the fulcrum is your elbow. The tendon is where you're pulling up, and this is where the load is. You're full of levers. The human body is a great compound machine. Um, you've got escalators, okay? Uh, clocks, computers, all these things are compound machines. They are combinations of more than one simple machine. Let's use one as an example, okay? A bike. Pedals. Well, what kind of simple machine are pedals? Well, they're actually, we can say they are part of a wheel and axle. Okay? In fact, you can also say really that uh, they're levers, okay? Because you're pushing down on the one end and that middle part is the fulcrum. So you're actually moving it around. That's a lever. I really need to work my handwriting. Um, gears, well, what are they? Well, they are simply wheels and axles. Okay. Wheels and tires, again, wheels and axles, same thing. Uh, handlebars. Ride my, my, I can ride my bike with no handlebars. What are they? They're levers, okay? Because you have a pivot and you have, you're basically pivoting around something. Screws are, well, they're screws as a simple machine. And the chains on the bike, they are examples of pulleys um, and gears kind of put together because the chain works sort of like a pulley because uh, it's pulling stuff and you've got the gears attached to it. So that's really it about using machines. I hope this really helps you on the PSSA. Uh, if you have any questions, don't be afraid to ask in class, and I'll see you then.